So, sir, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm very grateful for your time and energy. I know that you are traveling, and during that travel time, you took out time for this for our viewers for the channel of mine. So, you could share your wisdom with all of the people who are who will be going to watch this video. So, I'm very grateful for your time and energy, sir. Now, no, it's always my pleasure to share whatever little I know with people around me. So uh, the people who do not know the background about Sanjay Jain, sir, uh, I will just give a little bit of introduction. Um, Sanjay Jain, sir, is a double gold medalist from IIM Ahmedabad. Apart from being a rank holder cost accountant and rank holder commerce graduate, he's also a qualified company secretary and is currently the managing director of TT Limited. Having headed three national level textile associations, he's also involved in policy making at the center and state level and is also actively involved in various social projects spanning health and education. Sanjay is a recipient of numerous awards, the Udyog Ratna Outstanding Businessman Industrialist Award, Asia Pacific Entrepreneurship Award, BW Global Business Awards, ET Business Leadership Award, and CEO with HR or Orientation Award. A prolific speaker, Sanjay has written many articles and he has published a book under his name, published by the very famous Bloomsbury. So, so you're Thank back. you. Thank you, Shagun, for a very charitable... Uh introduction this is a really commendable your life has been both academically and professionally you have done so well you're such a big inspiration for for the people who are in the 20s 30s and are still exploring different aspects of their life oh uh, yeah i i can't be complaining <laughs> So, sir, talking about your book, uh, A Pinch of Salt in the Recipe Called Life, I found the title of the book very interesting. When I was reading the, obviously, the content is so good, I read the book twice. But then the title in itself is very interesting. You said that uh, how important salt is in a recipe. That's how this important or the concepts that is included in the book is, is in life. So, you know, salt could mean different things to different people. It can mean having meaningful relationships. It can mean having flourishing career. But then what are the concepts that you have included in the book that you feel are as important as salt in a recipe? Uh, well, I'll just uh, uh, take it a bit back uh, to the title, uh, Pinch of Salt. Uh, I got this name on the dining table when my best dish was made, but there was something missing and I wasn't enjoying it. And I discovered uh, it was just that one pinch of salt as we said, namak kam tha. And so that's life for most of us. We all are 90 to 99% complete, capable, efficient. But the small things like a pinch of salt which lack in us, uh, would I would say it looks very small, but it's a game changer. Uh, just like a dish can change from being palatable to non-palatable, so can be your life. And I have tried to cover 18 such concepts which I have learned and experienced personally in my life post-education, uh, which are very simple. And they are not uh, related. Many people think I'm a businessman, so these must be business concepts. Yeah. But these are life concepts. Life. And I'm very happy that children from the age of 10 up to the age of 70 have read and enjoyed this book. Uh, it, You know, perspectives will change. You can apply it based on your circumstances. But they are more or less universal principles, simple, something you can uh, implement the very next moment after you've heard me. Uh, I don't want to be a preacher giving very, very long talks, which, you know, most of us find very good, but they find it very difficult to implement. I prefer to be that pinch of salt in people's life. So what has been your favorite concepts or something that you you want the viewers to start implementing from, from the moment on? Uh, I would say my second and third chapter combined, which are titled Out of Box and Disruption. I think that this I learned from a class eight-year-old boy who wrote a book, uh, which was a French son. So I read that book. And just one incident in that book uh, started provoking me and asking me why I've always done so well in life, but why I've been so stereotyped. Why haven't I been able to break the clutters? And I think so it's more important today where things are changing as we talk here. Uh, basically, uh, a simple question if we can ask ourselves, why? Is there a way of doing things differently? We are doing so many things every day on work, personal, social front, like even celebrating a birthday party. Can we be different? I'm not saying we'll always find something different to do, but are we asking this question to ourselves? And nowadays, I, after that boy's uh, book, there was one simple incident of a school project 
uh, which we have all done in our lives, but he did it very differently. Yeah. Uh, instead of making a booklet with using chart paper, a caliber project, uh, rather than a flat project and had its entry and all like an Egyptian pyramid, uh, because he was uh, the project was in Egypt. And I said, why? It was so simple. And in one of my discur talks uh, in on entrepreneurship, I got a call one month later from a chartered accountant. I didn't know. He said, I found your number. He says, inspired by you, I made my CV in the shape of a shoe sole when I applied to a shoe MNC company. So uh, I, I immediately reacted and said, congratulations. I didn't get the job. I said, oh, why did you call me? He said, sir, uh, I tried to be different. Uh, I said, as you said, we should be at least able to risk 10, 20% of what we have in life to, to be different. We may succeed or not, but at least let's make an attempt and slowly those small changes in life uh, will slowly uh, incrementally add to creating disruption. Yeah. So, uh, and for, he said he didn't get the job because he was a third time pass out CA, but he got a call from the HR head of that MNC saying, I've never in my life seen such an innovative and thought provoking mm -hmm. CV, resume, and never lose this creativeness. We can't give you a job because we have some yeah. rules and regulations. But uh, I'm sure you're going to do much better than you would have doing here. So basically, the idea is uh, be the change. And today we know change is not enough. Change is just to stay in the race. But if you want to lead, you need to be disruptive. You need to do things which uh, uh, create impact. But again, most people will say we are simple people. I'm not an I'm Ahmedabad gold medalist. I'm not a topper. I'm not being successful, sir. How can I be disruptive? You know, it is for those extraordinary people. I say you don't need to create one dhamaka to be disruptive. Uh, even if you every day make very small changes in your life, incrementally change into change into change across the year is going to finally lead to something big and impactful. Something which you yourself will not realize uh, at the end of the year when you look back what you were one year uh, back. So, Keep making that change and I'll share a Diwali example uh, so that people for better understanding. Yeah. Diwali, may we had one chocolate bomb, at least in Calcutta, I don't know what they called it, which as soon as you burned would create an impact and everyone around would look at you. Yeah. And you had a lari, uh, a single lari would have no impact. You would not even move from your place if someone burnt it. But when those laris were connected together to become a, a lari of a string of 5,000 or 10,000, its impact was more than a chocolate bomb. So even if you can't be the chocolate bomb, be that small Larry, keep connecting the dots. And when you become 5,000 or 10,000, uh, you're going to be bigger than the chocolate bomb. So never think, and I challenge if anyone in this world thinks I can't be at the change, I am helpless, I can challenge. He's just not challenging himself. He's not understanding himself. It's possible for all of us. Very, very relevant examples, sir. And examples from our own everyday life. We've all seen the ladi and the alu bomb and whatever we call it. And we've seen mm -hmm. it back. That's yeah. a part of incremental growth, you know, small manageable changes that you can make in your everyday life. Last time when I met you, you were with your daughter who is a very successful entrepreneur herself. Uh, and uh, there, there are a lot of people in their 20s also who want to become an entrepreneur but they have societal pressure, family pressures who, who keep telling, you know, that do a job that's more safe, more secure and less risky. And that is what disrupts the dreams of a lot of young people who want to become entrepreneurs. So what would you suggest them to, because, you know, entrepreneurs are so much needed in any economy. American economy is, uh, is what it is today because absolutely. Uh, of it goes I would the say it is easier for the youngsters. Uh, because they have no responsibilities before you get married. It's easier to take risks in life when you have less of responsibilities. So unless you have a very uh, difficult family position where you, you are the only bread earner and you need to uh, make uh, money, uh, earn money to make your family sustain, it's a different issue altogether. Otherwise, I think so if your family is there, you have a shelter, a house on your uh, of your parents, you have the, someone is feeding you, then why not take the risk? In fact, I would say that's the time to take risks. Yeah. And I think so pressures are less. You can tell your parents, look, give me five years. Let me do what I want. Finally, end of the day, if I succeed, fine. If I don't. And nowadays, it's so much more easier because there's so many successful examples. Mm -hmm. Earlier days when there were no examples, uh, it was very difficult to challenge 
uh, the uh, written rule, you know, of being a standard business. Now with so many startups all around, and I'll tell you for my daughter's case, I uh, I allowed her and I pushed her to start it without uh, just putting seed capital, without any expectations, without any uh, return. For me, it was like paying for university. Hmm. It was a three-year working university. Uh, even if she didn't succeed, I think so. We pay so much for education. Isn't this real-time education of doing your own startup, being on your own, taking your own decisions, much more valuable than going and reading a book and writing an exam? So I think so. All parents, uh, sh the society should be very supportive. And in fact, I mentor so many youngsters and I always tell them, follow your passion because today you can take anything big. It's unlike the old days that you had to be a CA engineer or doctor to make it. Today, anyone doing anything can take it big because there's more than ample opportunities yeah. and you're not restricted to a town or a country. You're globally, you can do anything today. That's true, sir. Sir, even to today's time, with the help of technology, it's not important to just pursue one career option. You can become, you know, a content creator while become a doctor, while become a YouTuber and an author and so much more. And with YouTube, you can just learn anything you want to and start implementing it. Sorry, I missed your question. No, no, I was just saying, sir. That I think so. I lost you, Shagan, in the end. I missed your yeah, question. Yeah, yeah. So I was not questioning, sir. I was saying that in today's time, it is so easy to have multiple, to pursue multiple career choices also. Like you can become a doctor while a content creator also, while an editor also, and while Absolutely. a YouTuber also. You can do all at once and write a book also. And with, with the advent of YouTube, you can just watch videos and learn any skill and excel at it. Absolutely. I think so. That's the fun of today. And in fact, I have a chapter in my book called multitasking yeah uh, which yes, talks yes. about that that uh, the, we can uh, within one uh, one we can do multiple things without being uh, you know uh, dishonest or uh, not doing the due to whatever is your main profession like i wrote my book uh, i wanted to write my book i didn't have time and peace of mind i wrote my whole book while traveling in flights where there was no email no whatsapp i would just open my laptop and start typing and it took me a year i travel a lot and I could finish. So if you want to do something, you'll surely find time. Yes, 100%. So, so you are a pastor from IIM Ahmedabad. That's, no, it needs no introduction. I also went to the campus to represent my college to do like a three-day strategy making competition. And the campus and yeah. the people around there are like, you know, another level I feel. So, so what is uh, what is one lasting uh, experience you want to share from your days at IIM Ahmedabad? I think so. Uh, in IIM Ahmedabad, it's not what I learned uh, uh, in terms of content, theory, that really mattered in life. I think so. It was an absolute game changer for me. And I'll just point out a few things rather than one with your permission. Uh -huh, sure, sure. Number one, uh, I met India there. In the fact, there were people from all across the country. And when you're staying together, you meet real India with different cultures. Secondly, uh, I learned how to talk and stand for my thoughts in front of the best. You know, the all IMA grads are all toppers from all across the country. There are so many IITNs. There are so many people from top, top, you know, where you need 99% to get admission. Places like Stevens, SRCC, Hindu, etc. And so many other places. And with different family backgrounds, someone is left in general of... Uh, Air Force, someone is from the Army, someone is a senior MNC uh, uh, corporate family, and so on and so forth. And the professors, of course, more than anything, they're like there to rip you apart, you know. And mm -hmm. to stand up and being able to communicate was very important because those days communication was not a part of your education. And lastly, and most important, which has held me in good state today, and I'm sure it will till the last, is I learned to think logically. Mm -hmm. You know what uh, we become, we can think about anything once you're an IMA, MBA grad, anything, it doesn't need to be a, your area of specialization. You can think through anything with a lot of clarity, very simply. And I think so that logical thought process uh, that develops over two years, by the way, they teach us, the way they are uh, educators. I think so that goes, those are the two, three, three things that made me a very, very different person. Uh, and I would strongly recommend 
everyone should have two years of hostel life, uh, irrespective of whichever field. You need to step out. You need to be part on your own, and you need to be part of the world. That is true, sir. So very, very true. Um, so last question, moving from academics to corporate world, because you've excelled there also. So what is the importance of being open, honest, and direct at workplace? Like I read a book. It, the title of the book was open, honest, and direct. And he was a very close friend of mine in Chicago, the author himself. Um, I, I even gave an interview to that uh, author. So what is the importance of being open, honest, and direct uh, in situations such as, you know, honestly accepting your emotions and weaknesses, open about asking questions and being direct about something and saying that, you know, if you don't understand something, just say it. I didn't understand. Can you repeat the question? Uh, I think so. There's, it's very important to be open, honest, and uh, ask questions. In fact, there's a chapter in my book titled uh, Ask Questions. Yes, yes. You know, most of us fear to ask questions because we feel we'll be ridiculed by people around us or uh, the person we are because. So it's always better to be stupid for a moment, hmm. getting ridiculed for a moment than being ignorant for life. Uh, you learn when you ask. So please be open and ask questions. Uh, whether it's business, whether it's education, whether it's normal life, we need to be always inquisitive. And I think so if we see childhood where we uh, we don't think too much, we don't filter things, we ask so many innocent questions, that's how we really develop ourselves, unknowingly or knowingly. So let's not lose that. Uh, one thing regarding corporate world about being direct and honest. I think so this is a relative term. And... Uh, my first chapter talks about Anekantvad, mm -hmm. uh, which is a Jain philosophy, but uh, it's very, very useful in life. And I like to touch upon it. It means that there's no one truth. There's not one uh, uh, right thing. Right. Uh, I may be right. You may be also right. Uh, because our perspectives are different. And uh, we typically feel for me to be right, he has to be wrong or she has to be wrong. Then only I'll be right. I think so this race of making the other person wrong rather than just being right yourself takes us in the wrong direction. So uh, don't be, be honest, direct, but don't be imposing. Yeah. Uh, understand the other's point of view. And there's that English saying, put yourselves in the other person's shoes. I'll just uh, extend this saying, before you put yourselves in the other person's shoes, take off your shoes. Uh, don't have to agree. Stand for what you are. But understand from where the other person is coming. And maybe you will find a different person. And if you do, be honest. Uh, you know, be honest that, okay, I've seen a new perspective. I've learned a new context. And I think so, I will change my stand. And I feel this is better. Uh, you don't have to say the other was what You just agree that I agree with this. And that's good enough. So uh, this will be a game changer in life. Improve your negotiation skills. Reduce friction within friends, family. Because we... Uh, we are in a win-win situation rather than a win-lose situation. Yeah. So I strongly, strongly recommend everyone uh, understand perspectives. And there's no one truth. There's not one correct answer. Even a murder, the most ghastly thing, uh, can be right if done in self-defense. So don't uh, you know be prejudiced and biased to anything in life. Right, right. So, so coming back, just the last thing that I want to discuss. You know, what, what suggestion or something to motivate the, you know, the 20-year-old who is wanting to get into an IIT or an IM and putting hours into studies, dedication and motivation. So what do you have something to motivate them, sir? Uh, you know, uh, you all, we all have seen a rubber band. A rubber band has elasticity. and uh, But beyond a point, if you pull a rubber band, it breaks, it snaps. Uh, so, uh, I would say, uh, don't just uh, have a prefix, man, I want to be an engineer, I want to be a doctor, I want to be an MBA. See what you are, what are your skill sets, what do you enjoy, what is your passion? Because there's ample opportunity, not only of being successful, but earning equally good amount of money. Because I understand money is also very important in life. Mm -hmm. So, don't just follow something for the sake of it. Uh, follow it if you like it. That will give you that extra 10-20% uh, advantage or the others around you with whom you're competing. Like it or not, 
we all are in a competing world relative world all admissions of iit mba uh, ca is an absolute course but others are all relative you know if you have 500 seats the top 500 will get in if you want to be a civil servant again it's relative of who comes you may be the very good but if someone is better than you you lose out if you like whatever you're passionate whatever you enjoy follow that and just remember that uh, in any building uh, the uh, foundation is very, very important for the building to last for a long period and weather all types of uh, problems, all types of weather, uh, earthquakes, etc. that may come. So for you, these early days of life actually from class 10 onwards are actually the foundation days of laying the brick. It's very frustrating. I also used to be very frustrated and always would say, Kya, yaar, ye padai khatam ho jai. you know, these exam date per date, it's like a you know, you have one date and then you have another date and you mm. can never really settle down at peace. And the pressure to keep performing. Keep performing. You know, uh, Sachin Tendulkar can make a duck. But in an education career, if you want to do IIT, you, you can't afford a duck. You need to keep trying, keep trying. Uh, but don't feel disheartened. Everyone doesn't have to go to IIT. There are people who have, haven't gone to IIT and are much more successful than an IITian. Uh, but do your best, enjoy what you're doing and uh, ensure that you excel in whatever field you do because, you know, this isn't a world of mediocre people. If you want to be disruptive, out of the box, super successful, do what you enjoy so that you are, you're, uh, you know, you're excellent, you're, you're absolutely different, differentiate yourself, whatever you do. Very true, sir. So I'm sure the viewers had got a lot of knowledge from you in just this 20 minutes and that they're going to imbibe, that they're going to imbibe. Uh, Shogun, just one thing, yes. uh, just for students, I'd like to add. Yes. Don't just study hard, study smart. smart. Uh, many people study very hard, but they think we, they don't do well. But uh, with hard, you have to be smart. And professionalism is needed in every walk of life, not just in business, also when you're studying education. So uh, plan out well so that uh, the, your probability of succeeding in exam goes up. Sure, sir. Definitely, sir. So I'm sure the viewers have a lot of takeaways, a lot of action points that they can work upon. And you have served as an inspiration for years and you will continue to do so, sir. There's so much to learn from you. There's so much of wisdom to take just from a few, few 20 minutes of words from you. Uh, so, so thank you so much.